Mark? Yep. Can you see your computer screen with your talking? I can. I okay. can. Are we ready? Good morning, everyone. Uh, hopefully, we will get to do this again one more time next week. And after that, we will actually get to see people in person somewhat, as long as you are six feet away from everybody. Uh, but those guidelines will be lined out for us on Monday with Deidre. So if you would like to sign in and get the scoop on that, that would be great. Again, Monday morning at 10 o'clock with Deidre. Otherwise, we are going to give Mr. McBride the floor. So if you can please make sure to mute yourselves. If you have any questions during his conversation, please input those into chat. We will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. So you're having uh, Congressman Cole on Tuesday, right? So that, that'll be good because he can give you from the first hand from the federal side. I can't really, you know, I hate to speak on that because I'll get it wrong. But how do y'all like my COVID-19 haircut? I mean, this is, this is, I'm styling here. Well, I got some clippers and shaved it off. I was tired of the long hair. I was either going to go a this or a ponytail and i thought this might be better or a man bun but uh, we have had a real busy week this week uh as all of y'all know things have uh just luckily it kind of slowed down yesterday and today and with the oil crash uh, uh monday we were looking at minus 38 dollars a barrel um uh, which today oil is trading about sixteen, seventeen dollars a barrel. So, so it has come back. Um, one of the things that I want people to understand on this this oil deal, it's the it's a cyclical deal. It's the same old uh, uh, roller coaster ride we're always on. This one is a little bit more extreme, a little different, but people need to realize that there's about one to 1.8 billion barrels of storage for oil worldwide. So before this all happened in the peak of, of normal everyday travel and going about airplanes when we use about a hundred million barrels of oil. So there's, there's always a demand. And if, if you just wanted to use what's in storage right now, we would deplete storage very quickly you know the united states has about 60 days of storage china's about the same um, russia's having problems right now because russia's does not have storage like like the united states great britain and, and uh, china does so they're in a world of hurt financially and so are the saudis because the saudis i think i've said this before their economy depends on this because they've got everybody gets everybody that's a, a Saudi citizen gets a royalty. So when oil's trading minus or just you know sixteen seventeen dollars a barrel, they're not getting enough money in there to pay cover their their monthly or quarterly or however they pay it their their fees. But anyway, that's enough about that. So uh, on the uh, so you know, if you follow me on Facebook, I post everything, this stuff every day. Uh, the health department shows we have 3,017 confirmed cases. Uh, there have been 179 deaths. And uh, there were two additional deaths, I guess, day before yesterday in Cleveland County and one additional death in Oklahoma County this week. All in the 65 and older group. So, uh, I don't, I'm not quite there yet. I'm 59. So thank goodness. I'm not in that group. I'm not making a little in light of that, but, uh, there's 80 testing sites available statewide. And, uh, we've tested about 48,000 people to date so far. That was a, as of yesterday. Uh, all of, you know, you've seen that the governor's wanting to open up the state, open up business. Uh, if you need the guidelines and they're still working on the guidelines because I was, te I was uh, texting with his staff yesterday because some of the churches in Moore were wondering, you know, specific guidelines other than what they're reading in the paper. And, and their response to me was, we will have that out. We're working on 
different categories of business and church and all that one at a time. So, so they'll have more specifics on that. So I, you know, when, when people are saying we're not following CDC guidelines, I think the governor in his, when he, uh, put this out there, it was just, you know, this is what we're going to do. I think we, he will follow with this is what we're going to do. And here's the CDC guidelines. Uh, this is all the governor still. I mean, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not against it at all. I think that we've got to open up the economy, but uh, you know, as far as the legislature, we really have it. This isn't something that we've got to get involved in. Uh, it's just, you know, the governor and his staff and CDC and, and people like that. So it'll all be opened up in phases. As most of you know, they'll phase one and then phase two will be in 14 days. And we'll just go, uh, go like that. Till we see what happens and, and kind of leave it for, for, from what I understand that they can, they can shut things back down. And we can go back into what we're in now, uh, if if problems do arise. But I think what well, if you listen to the news, which you know, who knows what to believe in the news? But I've I've heard this a few times that that uh, sunshine and uh, uh, warmer weather starts to you know this virus will start to go away. So it's in the same category as common cold, but uh, uh, that's the same thing with the cold. You know, it's something that's prevalent during the cooler months in the winter, and then it kind of goes away uh, in the uh, summertime. Uh, then we get to the budget. Uh, I'm sure you've read or heard some of what's going on with the budget. It looks like uh, for FY 2021, we're only going to have $6.9 billion to deal with. That's appropriated dollars by the legislature. Our, our actual state budget is more like 18 to 20 billion, but these, these are the numbers that the state that, that the legislature deals with. So that's about $1.4 billion less than we had last year. Uh, most of that, or the majority of that, well, right now it'd be due to uh, sales tax and use tax, and plus the, the gross production taxes is huge that we're, we're losing out. The state's uh, budget is balanced on $54 uh, oil and two, I think $2.60 natural gas. Natural gas is trading a buck 80 this morning. So, uh, I'm not as gloom and doom kind of as the governor is this. He wanted to do cuts in the beginning and not touch our savings. I, I, I realize we're in a, in a predicament right now, but oil crashed overnight. It can bounce back overnight. Like I was explaining the, the, uh, uh, the demand is still there. Once these countries come online, like the United States, once we start opening up the doors, people start driving more, we're going to start using more oil. And at some point we dwindle down a lot of these, these reserves, these oil that's in storage at some point and the price will come back. I don't know if we will see, you know, 50 or hundred dollar oil, but, there's definitely going to be an increase. You take companies like Continental today, they, uh, they shut in all their wells and, and canceled their contracts that they had. So, so I think that's a wise move. I mean, why sell a commodity like that if you can afford to for $17 a barrel when you know it's worth way more than that? Well, it probably costs them $40 a barrel or 35 to actually produce it to break even. So uh, I think we're a little premature. Uh, the governor's been talking about the 2022 budget. Well, that's that's a long ways out there. I mean, nobody can plan that far out on, on a budget like this. He's talking that we'll be, you know, a negative 1.6 or $7 billion in 2022, which 
I don't agree with, I, uh, and most of the legislature doesn't agree with, that um, oil will rebound, our economy will rebound. I just have faith in our economy and uh, that we're all going to get back out there. Things are going to be different. We're probably, businesses are going to operate differently and, and things, but, but, uh, but we will rebound at some point. It's going to take some trouble. The only, the other thing that I had talked about was I've been visiting with the attorney general some on this stimulus money. So we're getting 1.6 billion of the first round of money. And the, some of the governor's staff has the thought that this cannot be used for general revenue, only for a COVID crisis. But then talking with the attorney general, and he, he agrees with me, or I agree with him. He's way smarter than I am. But, but the reason we're in this situation that we're in right now is because of the COVID crisis. So he believes that a portion of this money can be used for general revenue. So if that's the case, then that $1.4 billion deficit we're looking at should be less because I don't see if education is getting $300 million from the feds, I don't see why we need to cut education or if uh, libraries are getting money or, or whatever, you know, there's so many people handling this situation, you know, from workers to uh, health and all that. I don't, I think that this money will be able to be used at the end of the day, some a portion of it for the general revenue. So it'll make things look better. Um, let me see here if I got anything else. Oh, the only other thing I had really not just news. Some of y'all may have saw where the governor signed a, uh, a compact with the Oto Missouri tribe and the Comanches on Monday, I believe it was a gaming compact with these two specific tribes. They agreed to some stuff. It's, really a sad day because it's totally unconstitutional. The attorney general is against it. Uh, they're going to send it to the department of interior, the department of interior will kick it back because all these agreements, it's not what we as a state do. It's, we can do that, but it's got to be approved by the department of interior and the Bureau of Indian affairs on these things. So it's, uh, um, the governor overstepped his, his, authority he can't do what he did it takes a lot of that takes legislative action and uh, i'm sure the chickasaws and cherokees will file a suit we have not the legislature has not filed anything we're going to let the tribes hash this out we we did send a very strong letter to the governor um, pointing out the problems with this and that we were disappointed that 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 he would go forward that with this one. So we've been pretty resolved in our stance on this Indian gaming deal. But anyway, I'm open for questions. Kim, anything you got, I'll, uh, I'll try to answer. I did pretty good for not having my notes in front of me. Well, I guess I were. Technology is winning, Mark. Oh gosh. And I hate it. <laughs> I do too, Mark. <laughs> uh, so, in the hours plan, which is open up safely, uh, or what is it? Open up, uh, recovery safely, and recover, right. recover safely. That's what hours stands for. I'm gonna send you a pic, please don't do that. <laughs> okay, send me a pic with everybody in it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Um, anyway. There are certain industries are being uh, noted specifically, such as the spas and the tanning and massage. Uh, uh, some of the other stuff is not as clearly stated. Do we think that at a later time that's going to be addressed more specifically in one of the additional phases or um, I think so. I think what they're doing, or 
I mean, now I'm reading between the lines because I'm not in that room. Legislature's not. But from what I'm seeing is, so they're taking like, say, a nail salon, haircuts, uh, tanning, and those things. You can do all of that by appointment. So there you continue to have that social distancing. If you've got four barber chairs in your barber shop, you can take two at a time. You know, I, that's, I'm just throwing that out there. You don't have anybody setting. They got to set in their vehicle and come in when those people come out, you know, and, and same way with restaurants. I think, you know, p places like, like Holly's, they can, you know, by appointment or they can do, you know, say every other booth. And, and then when they fill up, they're just filled up from every other booth. So I think, I think that's, they're trying to target those kind of businesses that can kind of self, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Self, uh, uh, not quarantine, but self distance themselves. Uh, you know, the, think, the hard part ahead. about that is the salons that are so crammed close together. And I only use that because my daughter is one, you know, there's 12 people that work in there. And if each one of them has one, now you're up to 25 to 30 people. Yeah. But see the salon owner is just going to have to regulate that they can, you I, know, so, so many people, you know, if you, if you've got 12, you can only have six hairstylists every other day, they can trade out something like that. I totally I agree. Are the, those are the easy things to, to deal with, you know, the opening up JC pennies and some of your other shops, that's a little different, but they can still, I, I, I really think the public is smart enough to, to, to self distance themselves. I leave, I leave it to our own. Well, whatever. But but I th I think we're smart enough. I mean, when I go to the grocery store, I'm not rude to people, or or Lowe's or somewhere. I see somebody I know and I stop talk to them. Even out in the distance where I'm building houses, the neighbors are friends of mine. But I don't got to get right up in their face, you know. So I agree. So that's just Mark. That's just Mark McBride talking. So so according to this, May first is going to be dining, entertainment, movie theaters, and sporting venues are recommended or can operate as long as they're using the CDC guidelines. Um, and they're also mentioning places of worship, which is, I'm not quite sure how feasible some of that is in regards to the social distancing by separating the rows or the pews and only having one pew open and it, and it still, that makes sense. Well, in some, in some the pews aren't just like open, and so it's it's seats thirty, and they've got to you know cross. Right. So you know, I, I'm not quite sure logistically how some of this is going to be feasible for some entities, even like an older church that has the long wooden pews. I mean, the the newer churches or churches that have done remodels and they have chairs that makes it easier, but pews themselves so i i don't know I, 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 that's just yeah food for thought on my end i guess that i keep yeah oh i i see it i just think you know i just i you know you just gotta leave it up to each individual's choice on that you know i would choose to go to church i'm not gonna go to a sporting event no no way i'm not gonna go to the movies because there's no way you can, in my opinion, that you can police everybody standing there getting popcorn and bumping into one another and kids running around the bathrooms. I don't, I don't see that. Now I choose to go to church because of my faith, you know, I, I guess, but, but I, the, the movie theaters little stretch for me. And from what I'm reading, there's not a whole lot of movies that got finished to get, out there but uh i may be wrong and then let's see they're they're stating that bars will stay closed within phase one uh, yes they're allowing gyms to open what's your uh view on Her the gyms opening well i probably should go to one but i don't i don't feel like it <laughs> 
this is my chance to do a reopen of the gym. No, I, uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. We got to do it at some point, right. I guess. Um, a, a Georgia, I guess, is, is sending everybody a flutter uh, in regards to their opening everything basically today. So really, yeah, and and there are some other states that are 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 thinking about it, and then of course you have the states that are large have larger numbers of cases, like New York, Florida, and California, that are you know we're shut, we're keeping our doors shut, and we're going to keep them shut for a while. So. Right. Um, uh, Stephen has a question. I'm yeah, he did. I'm sorry, Stephen, unmute yourself. There you are. You're unmuted. Oh. Yes, ma'am. I will unmute myself. <laughs> I, I just assumed Kim could read it, but uh, Mark, I keep hearing this question it was on a chat with uh, Representative Hearn just a, a bit ago before this and even asked that. Um, which supersedes which? The city stay-at-home orders or the state hours? Which supersedes the city or the state? Is that yeah, what we follow, yeah this do we follow state and so everything's open today or so i'm physically in norman um and and norman's not till may one in reality we all believe in local control in fact cities don't exist without the state basically so so um me personally, I'm going to do whatever, whatever city says to do. Um, but, but the governor, I mean, the state has the power to do whatever they want to do or, or mandate. Now I may be totally wrong, but this stuff I've dealt with in the past, uh, on emergencies and stuff like that, it's, it's really the state but I think the state will honor whatever individual cities want to do through this. Because that's the same that Holt, I mean, Holt has come out and said that Oklahoma uh, city where he is the mayor, they're not opening till May. Yeah. So that was the original, the governor's original deal was May 1st and Norman mayor has done the same. Yes. Uh, Edmond and Tulsa as well. Are following with Norman. Norman. Yeah. May. yeah. And I don't, you know, if that's what their mayors and their city council feel like is best, I'll, I'll support them. I support Glenn and our city council. I mean, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm on the state level, you know, and I really, you know, it's, <laughs> I've told Glenn and Steve Eady, we all had an agreement. I'll stay out of your business. If you stay out of mine, but call me if you need me, you know, it's, it's always, I've always had a good working relationship with them because I don't cross over, but uh, I, I don't know if that, that's, that was kind of a wishy-washy answer. And your senior but, and all that and what your plans are. Got it. But I, I do think, I do think at the end of the day that, you know, if push comes to shove, the state, yeah, the, I, I do know the state would, would override whatever the city wanted to do. So has there been conversation on the state level or at least legislature? I, again, you know, you're not in the room of those making the hours plan. Uh, if the spike were to happen again? Uh, from what I do know, what little that is, yes, if there is a spike, and I think that he has that in his order, if there is a spike, then we go back to where we're at today. Okay. So, um, I don't know, I don't, you know, I don't know that the numbers are even correct, you know, um, I think the, the, ratio would go down if we tested more people you know like i said the other day you know one day uh new york tested thirteen thousand people well, at the time we only had thirteen thousand kits now i realize that they've got a greater population than we do but uh 
Yeah, they, they said on the news this morning that New York City um, has confirmed over a million uh, citizens with right. antibodies. So, which changes their numbers, changes their ratio. Um, right. People that have recovered. So, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Anyone have any additional questions? It is really, I never dreamed, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, I've had, I got elected and being a novice in politics and we had the tornado. I at 14 where we lost like 13, 1400 houses here and more. We've had, we've had uh, budget deficits. We've had teacher walkout. We've had this, we've had up and down the oil economy. I mean, it's just, this has really been eight years of a roller coaster ride from one year to the next. And last year, it was really cool. It was good. It was easy. We got through it. So I, I have had one year out of eight that was not too bad. <laughs> hey, Chris, what were we talking about a minute ago? And uh, said, the, the money related to uh, the education subcommittee. I was actually going to ask a little bit about that anyway, in the, in the sense of the federal, that 1.6, going back to what Governor and um, Senator Langford said last night, say, echoing kind of the same thing you were saying with how much money of that do we have actually at the state's disposal for the general revenue? How quickly does, do you think we'll find that out? Because you guys are going to need that to make, to make your decisions, right? I think, yeah, I think, we need that pretty quick. Uh, my knowledge is, or from what we were trying to find out, we, we didn't have any guidance on it uh, The la uh, on Monday. I sent out a letter to everybody asking for, show me what it looks like, a 7 or 10% cut, just to use in a letter to send out that, in defense of education that we don't want to cut education any more than we, but, but we need to find that out because out of that 1.6 billion, what if there's, what if there's 500 million we can use, then we're only looking at 600 million deficit. And then that makes our rainy day and our savings a lot better, you know? So, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I'm not, I don't have as much of a knee jerk reaction because of going through six years of this, basically of, of a revenue failure that we we've had. And, uh, the last revenue failure was within a hundred million of this one, you know? So, so I think I don't, I don't, I don't think it's wise to cut, especially in this environment. I mean, there, I think there's going to be some psychological issues after this, or they're probably going on dear, during this. Someone told me, and I, I, I can't verify this, but don't quote me, but, but uh, uh, domestic violence has increased. Now, I don't know that that's true, but, but that's I'm what sure it is. is. <laughs> it is? Oh, you're sure it has? <laughs> Liquor sales and beer sales are up. <laughs> I'm only, I'm only kidding, but I'm sure it is. Yeah. But uh, I think that there's... Uh, I don't think it's this gloom and doom. And I may be totally wrong. You know, you may tell me six months from now, McBride, you were wrong. But I just, I, I just kind of practical and want to take a, a slow approach and take a look. I'm not quitting my business. I mean, I've got two spec houses I'm starting. I mean, for one, if, if, if I go down, everybody's go, going to be going down at the same time. So um, I want to encourage people to, to uh, um, support the economy. I, we, buy dinner at different places. I bought the police department uh, lunch the other day and Santa Fe place lunch the other day and different places. So I just, if whatever you can do to give a shot in the arm to the economy is, is huge. And I got off track there, Chris, I'm sorry, but I think, <laughs> we, I think we, I think we got it. 
Steve, and I'll call I'll call her Chris and and we'll talk to her about this the budget for libraries. Yeah, and I texted you her number and I just yeah. sent her a quick email and said if you know if she has a chance also reach out to you too. So okay, okay, thanks. Stephen, you had a question. Yeah, first of all, Dusty Johnston wants to know when you're going to shave. <laughs> oh, you know, I was actually thinking about shaving today. <laughs> I uh, I did my head the other day, so I've been kind of trimming it. I don't want it to get too long, but I'm getting kind of tired of it. It's getting kind of itchy. Yeah. So uh, it I, all can't go back, I can't go back to the Capitol like this. So. <laughs> it, actually, that leads to my question. So um, I've missed the timeline as far as going back, resuming session, et cetera, et cetera. As you know, Mike Means, the uh, uh, Oklahoma Home Builders Association, a lot of us have been working um, Senate Bill 1713 and trying to get that now through the house. When will everything resume? When will you guys be able to take up that bill and, and hopefully get that passed? Uh, probably not gonna hear any policy bills. Okay. Um, at one point they were talking about hearing 50 policy bills, but that, that wouldn't be on the list. Um, it would be something that was probably health related or, um, something pretty serious, you know, something that we really needed to function government right now uh, until we have a budget, there's no policy bills going to be heard. That's per the speaker. That Senate bill, was that the one for the, uh, the siding and brick, the exteriors? Yeah. yeah. I fought that really hard against it last year. I'm kind of neutral on it this year. So um, I, I've got to, I, well, well, we'll talk later. I'll tell you my kind of where I've been. There's not many little bitty builders like me anymore. <laughs> so uh, uh, any more questions? Anyone? Okay. Well, Mark, uh, I guess we're officially going back to work. Are you ready to do one? next week yeah i can do one next week Let, let's do another one next week and uh we'll see how the first back to work week um for certain industries works um thank you guys again for taking time out of your day again monday we will be hosting deidre ebry and she'll be giving us some insight into the guidelines that will be implemented for reopening on monday at 10 o'clock and then Tuesday at 11 o'clock, we will be hosting Congressman Tom Cole, um, which I believe will be an interesting conversation on the federal level. We, uh, Senator Langford has been really good about doing Facebook Lives and providing information, but this will get, again give us another uh, aspect or view of the federal side of things. Mark, you're always so gracious to help us out with this, and we deeply appreciate it. Other than that, Everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe. Um, not only staying safe, but make sure that you are tornado preparedness because it is that time of year. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Kim.